Katie Tate, John Luther Church family and friends. Good evening, Epiphany Lutheran Church and friends. Welcome to Friday Fun Night. We haven't counted. I don't even know how many we've done. We've been doing this since a while. April, wouldn't you say? Maybe? Was it April? Or April? in March? I don't know. Something like that. We've been doing it a while. Yeah. Having fun. Two different houses. So, are we broadcasting everywhere, Sam? Yes, we are broadcasting. Okay. We just Every. want to make sure we're broadcasting everywhere. We want to make sure that Epiphany folks are seeing it, St. John folks are seeing it, that everybody's seeing Family it. Family and friends who join us, we're happy you join us wherever you may be. So we're glad to be with you. We are wearing our lovely shirts from our friends, Janet and Shirley of Epiphany Lutheran. Yep. Thank, Thank you, you Janet. So Thank much, you, Shirley. Janet and Shirley, we love the shirts. We'll try to tag you in this. Make sure you watch this. So. Yes, yes. And for hats tonight, I'm wearing a hat from my Yosemite National Park days. I will bow down because it's a little, it's a little bigger style. It's very colorful. But they have for a long time. But that's why I wore it to go with all I my. I tried to find it. I tried to color. find my one colorful hat and I couldn't find it. So. Well, you know, it may still be packed away it with summer be. stuff, it so we'll have be. to look and see that's if we can find it for next week. So. so. But yes, I I spent two summers in Yosemite National Park, working and living. I would love to do that. Whenever we both retire. Yeah. Or else I'll go without you. Just be a chaplain there for well, just summer. You, you come visit yeah. me every once in a while. That's right. So, yeah. Well, because you're going to work longer than me, you said. That's it. Because you're younger than me. I'm so, so much know. younger. Yes. Oh, spare me. <laughs> she, you're not that much younger. No, I'm not. I'm Get not. over yourself. Just a joke, folks. Yeah, you're lucky your wife loves you. That's it. I'm lucky that, that we have this much space <laughs> uh -huh. between us. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Father's Day is over. I hope the fathers had a great Father's Day, Grandfather's Day, Great Grandfather's Day, all those good uncles. I, I still, my brother Tim, I have, I'm behind on my duties. I usually send him a uncle's card for Father's Day, and I have not done that yet, so I will get on the ball and get that out this weekend. I don't know if my friend Cheryl can see this or not. Uh, Cheryl Vertrice, who is recovering in rehab. From having broken her hip up, uh, a couple weeks ago but Cheryl we're praying for you every day and praying for the best for your recovery love you and and if you get to see this one of these times just know that uh, we lift you up I lift you up all the time and we pray for you so the first day of summer happened since we last met uh, so it is officially summer yes it's unofficially summer Memorial Day but officially by the vernal equinox and Weather meteorological. Summer solstice. Well, summer solstice. Vernal equinox is the start of spring. Oh, he, he would know better than me. But this is, but you know what? The summer solstice is actually, even though the start of summer, is I know one thing about about my wife is that she actually gets very disappointed in the summer solstice. Well, I didn't I didn't think of that this year. I tried oh, not to. I'm sorry. Well, it's my cousin Tish's birthday, the twenty-first. Well, no, I usually do. But the reason I, why is well because it's the longest day of the year, and then every day our shorter. every day gets shorter, and then we wait till December when we have equal day and night. And I just I love the sun. I mean, I'm careful because I've had a little um, cancerous cell on my nose that I had to have surgery on a couple of years ago. But uh, but I do love being. I enjoy the sun. Uh, it makes me feel better. I make most everybody feel better. Even if you have to be cautious of it so you don't get burned or get problems. But yes, I love the sun. Well, you know, part of what's helped that is that we go to Michigan in July. And because we're so far north when we go to camp, our days almost stretch to 10 o'clock. That's true. So it's even longer than the longest day that we have here in Georgia. So that has really, like, boosted me because I love going to Michigan in the summer. I don't want to live there in the winter. Our friends who are Michiganites, but Michiganders. I, Michiganders. Yeah. But I love it in the summer. Man, it is beautiful. It is gorgeous. It is so lovely. I, I really am looking forward to going. So so anyway, so I decided since we didn't really, you know, Fort July is next week, so I decided that I would look up stuff about summer. Fun facts about summer and since David has his book. I have so, books. I have three books. I may split my time between three books. So the first modern Olympic Games, which this is an Olympic 
summer. I'm not you know, like any one. other it's Olympic. Different. Yeah, it's but it, you know, it's so different. Because yeah. Japan is being very careful because they've got COVID too, and they're just being very cautious. So it. But I've always, I, I, we, you remember the Hoys, they would always go to the Olympics. I've always wanted to go to the Olympics, hasn't happened, and I missed the Atlanta Olympics by two days. We came down to interview for my first position in 1996, two days after the Olympics was over, because we were driving across country to move from California to Georgia, but we were seeing family and friends along the way, and... But when we went to the airport, do you remember we saw a number we of athletes leaving, athletes leaving, and they had their yeah. their country's uniforms on, and that was really cool. But we did not we did not get to experience the Olympics, so that's still on my bucket list. So, but I will be watching uh, as well as I can if it's on while we're on vacation, because I don't watch a whole lot of TV. Okay. So we were talking about. Olympics. So anyway, the first modern Olympic Games were held in the summer. And, and we know Athens, in Greece. Athens, yes. Do you have a guess of what year? 1898. 1896. Ooh. You were close by, but you missed it by two days. So Two years. Two years. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the first day of summer. It's between uh, June 20th and 22nd, yes. which is what, what threw me out, off. But. So, and I always thought the first day of summer was June 21st because that's my cousin's birthday, my cousin Tish. And I was always on the calendar the first day of summer. But this says the first day of summer goes between June 20th yes. and June 22nd. Each one of each, each one on this. Yes. Set it, you have to look it up. And the day varies year. due to the Earth's rotation not exactly reflecting our calendar year. Yes. What is the last day of summer? Since we just started summer. Well, it it the once again it all. This depends. only gives one day. Okay. So I would guess September 19th. It says September 20th. 20th. Okay. You're off by a day. By I got day. that one right. Watermelon, which I love, but David does not. Samuel and I love watermelon. He says it's one of the summer's best summer treats. But did you know that watermelons are not a fruit, but a vegetable instead? Oh, okay. Because they belong to the cucumber family vegetables, which you also do not like cucumbers. I like cucumbers. It just reminds me, many of you might know this fact already, but uh, I, but uh, that, that tomatoes, and it was called the difference, be, the difference between... Knowledge and wisdom. You ready for the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Uh-huh. Knowledge is knowing that a tomato is not a vegetable but a fruit. Yes, it's nightshade. Isn't but it? wisdom, wisdom is also realizing that you shouldn't put the tomato in your fruit salad. Yeah, why? Well, no, it's, just, it's yeah. just a little choice. And it's something I didn't know because my mom always put tomatoes in the fridge is if you want them to keep their fresh flavor, you do not put them in the refrigerator. And if they're not quite ripe, what do you do with them? What do you do you with set them outside uh-huh. to ripen up. So if you get a tomato and it's not quite the color you want, I mean, you know, I like yellows too, but if you want it to be bright red, you put it outside on a outside and do you just let it ripen up. Yeah. It's a great way to okay. have them, yes. So the Eiffel Tower, which we have been to, David and I have been to, actually grows in the heat of the summer. Due to the iron expanding, the tower grows about six inches every summer. So if you go in the summer to Paris, which I I know I just heard this week, Scotland has reopened its borders okay. to visitors. I'm not sure about France yet. But if you, if you have been to the Eiffel Tower in the summer, it was taller than it was when we went in November. If you love ice cream, who doesn't love ice cream? I love ice cream. Favorite flavor? Yeah, mint chip probably still. Sam? Uh, vanilla. Yeah, Sam is very vanilla Yes. I go back and forth between butter pecan and pistachio and anything chocolate with nuts in it. I like them all. Vanilla is okay. If I'm going to have vanilla, as I've said before, I have to have something with a light chocolate sauce. So, anyway. anyway. Sorry, I'm just sharing. <laughs> I know, you're just waiting for your turn. No, sorry. Well, it might be my last one for now. The summer season should be your favorite because July is National Ice Cream Month. And you know, in the next week, by the Friday, we will be in National Ice Cream Month. 
But then here's a tip for the summer. If you do wind up with a bunch of vanilla like we did, you can soften it up and mix stuff in and refreeze it and have some kind of new ice cream. So I got, we got butterscotch uh, sauce because I love butterscotch and I toasted pecans and mixed it in and it's close to butter pecan. Butter pecan, yeah. yes. Yeah. All right, your turn. Well, it just reminds me with July being ice cream month, that probably helps explain in the little towns out in, uh, out oh in western gosh. Illinois, every church would have, the, the, the town I was in, Golden, Illinois, there were three Lutheran churches in this town of 500, and every single one of them had an ice cream social. Yes. During the, during the summer. Well, yeah, and you know, that was only 45 minutes from where I grew up. And and when I grew up, there was always ice cream socials in the summer. Um, and, you know, but they make pineapple ice cream, which I love. Yes. We need to find out. Well, I know we may not be there in the right time, but boy. But I love to go get some pineapple fun. ice cream. It's delightful. I just have to say. Okay. So, and they would have May Drive. I think they made May Drive. So if you don't know what a May Drive is, look it up. It's a Midwestern thing. So, all right, your turn. All right. Sam, give me a number, Sam. Um, I don't know, three. Three? I don't know, well, 33. What a boring number. Fine, 33. 33, okay. That sounds much better. Oh, good. So now, you know what? You get to, you get to. You should, like, mark. We get to have riddles on again. here. Okay. Oh. So here we go. So, why do artists constantly feel cold? Sam, why do artists constantly feel cold? Why do artists constantly feel cold? Because they're surrounded by drafts. Oh. Oh. Why, who did Frankenstein's monster bring to the prom? Who did Frankenstein's monster lead, uh, take to the Rodzilla? prom? Rodzilla? His ghoul friend. Oh, cute. Which dinosaur knows the most words? Tyrannosaurus Rex? The Thesaurus. Ah. Oh. Oh. So what is the difference between a cat and a comma? What's the difference between a cat and a comma? A cat has claws at the end of pause. Uh -huh. A comma is a pause at the end of a clause. <laughs> what did Charles Dickens keep in his spice rack? The best of times and the worst of times. I get it. T-H-Y-M-E. Yes. Uh, uh, uh. And what, Sam, what do you call an old snowman? What do you call an old snowman? Water. Ah. Uh, Especially in the summer. That's right. Oh, and why was the chef embarrassed? Why was the chef embarrassed? Because he saw the salad dressing. Ah. Uh, there we go. All right, you're on. By the way, if you have any Fourth of July traditions that you'd love to share with us, please... Send them in, put them up tonight. I always look at the comments afterwards or share them with Pastor David or I so we can share some of your traditions next week. Maybe you'll do something new for 4th of July. This will be a very unusual 4th of July for us because we have been back to the Midwest. We'll be here. Yeah, I've we'll been thinking, I'm like, what are we going to We'll get do? to find out what 4th of July traditions are. Well, I'm like, what are we going to do? Because we haven't been here for, we haven't been here any 4th of July since we moved back in 2014. Mm -hmm. We spent so much of our 4th of July in Hannibal. The reason we won't be back this year is because the camp we go to moved. All these other years, it was usually right around 4th of July or the week after 4th of July. So we'd go see family first and then go there. But now, the camp we're going to move to the end of July. So we won't be leaving until after July 18th. So, well, after church on July 18th. Yes. So, anyway, share your traditions. What are things you love to do? What are foods you love to have? What are foods you love to make? We'd love to know. we got to figure out what we're doing for work. It's a Sunday. It's a Sunday. It it's our first Sunday back in our sanctuary. So it'll be it'll be a great day. So, All right. Uh, a June fun fact is that the month of June is named after the Roman goddess Juno. Juno. Yeah. The first woman's bathing suit was created in the 1800s. It came with a pair of Bloomers. Mm -hmm. I thought this one was really good. The dog days of summer refer to the dates from July 3rd to August 11th. We have had some beautiful weather here in Georgia in June. Amazing weather. Uh, I can't get over it. We've had, besides the rain we've had, which we really needed, although we've had a lot of rain now, but we've had some really gorgeous days. It's unbelievable. 
Anyway, the dog days of summer are named so after the after the Sirius the dog star. This star is located in the constellation of Canis Major. And speaking of which, last night was the strawberry full moon. So I guess they're naming m moons now. Yeah. It doesn't mean that it was red. It was because mm -hmm. strawberries are so big in June is why it's being called the strawberry moon. Because I thought when I heard it, they... that means red? Well, no. the moon can become red. It's well, yeah, but that yeah, was not the case yeah. for this. Huh, that's... So, they that's... just... I guess meteorologists have decided to name some of these moons. You know, like I the blue feel, moon, even though it's not blue, and it's a strawberry moon. I feel like the strawberry moon would be a better name for, you know, the blood moon uh, than what its actual name is. Well, but that's years. more like fall, you know, like the, well, no, the that harvest moon that's really orange. Well, no, that happens all the time. Because it's not, it, it turns red when the sun is in front of the earth and behind the earth uh, directly is the moon. Here's another interesting thing. Frisbees. Have, have you played with the Frisbee in a while? I'd love to get one out. Invented in the 1870s as a pie plate, but in the 1940s, college students began throwing them around. They have since stopped being used for pie plates and are now a summertime staple. Mm -hmm. Or a full-on intramural sport if you're at Carleton College. Well, in many places, there's a, a few parks around here that have uh ultimate frisbee was yeah. was it was the sport of choice at carlton college well, in minnesota no yeah. less yes so july is next week and that's an actual blueberry month and speaking of which if you like to pick there's plenty of places that have blueberries peaches and strawberries in georgia that you could pick now i picked my first gallon of, of blueberries this week at blueberry hill it's it's over my way uh close to 2 12 and 20 on the way to covington and I hope to go back and pick another bucket tomorrow. I love, Sam and I usually go together and pick them. And uh, we pick four, four plus gallons a summer so we can freeze as many as possible. And I always think it's good to go in the morning because it's a lot cooler. Or go in the evening, but then you're much more likely to get bit up. And they seem to like me, so I'd rather go during the daytime, morning time. So, uh, Mosquitoes, speaking of which are most prevalent during summer months. No kidding. Mosquitoes have been on Earth more than 30 million years, they say. So, and August was named after Julius Caesar's nephew. He had received the title of Augustus, which means reverend. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Um, which means July is named after Julius Caesar himself. Yes, actually, that's on here. Uh, Roman General Mark Anthony named the month of July. After Julius Caesar, so Mark Anthony did that. Oh. So can not make sure it gets killed off, and then name a month after. That's right. Just let's let's just name it. Yeah, let's so. just let's just do that. So, and then I'll give a couple more, and then it'll be your turn. The first national spelling bee was held on June seventeenth, my brother Tom's birthday, eighteen twenty-five. More thunderstorms occur during summer than any other time of the year. They also take place more commonly in the southeast of England. And finally, ice pops were invented in 1905 by an 11-year-old boy. Now, how did how they remember that? Hmm. Over 100 years, that was an 11-year-old boy. But Must that's be pretty a folk cool. story. I that's love it. ice ice popsicles as we know them. Ice pops, I love it. So, Sam, pick another number as I switch books. Uh, let's do 64. 64. Let's do 64, Sam. 64. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's see. It takes one 15 to 20 year old tree. It, or, or let me put it this way. How many paper bags do you think can come out of one 15 to 20 year old tree? 400? 700 paper bags. Wow. There you go. So, and some spas in China offer fish pedicures. Or live fish eat away the dead skin on your feet. Oh, oh my yeah, goodness. I've heard about that before. I've heard about that too, but I'm not sure. I want to. So we will have to check. We will have to check with with our our our, our, our niece Sabrina to see mm. if if our family ever did that. So, and speaking of of mosquitoes and insects, for every person on Earth, for each person on Earth, there are 200 million insects. 
So in other words, if you want it, so quick math there, folks, if you want to know how many insects are on this world, that means you need to multiply, uh, what is it, are we at now? Eight billion? Eight billion times 200 million. That's a lot of zeros. So, um, did you know that dogs do not have an appendix? Yeah. yeah. There you go. How'd you know that? Because instead of an appendix, uh, an appendix, they have a second stomach. That's why they can't eat grapes because they blow up in their stomach and it can literally like poison them. Oh. oh. Okay. We'll have to remember that when we get. The I know dogs. that dogs the, shouldn't eat chocolate. It can go. make them. It can make them very sick if they can die from. Oh, them. extremely sick. So, yes. so, and do you know what the smallest unit of time is called? What is the smallest? The second. The yocto second. Oh. I've never heard of that. I don't and speaking of ice cream, mm -hmm. in Kentucky. It is illegal to carry ice cream in your back pocket. Just remember well, that. Well, why in the world was that made a law? That is just That ridiculous. is just, yeah. Okay. There you go. All right. Are we good? We're good. Okay. So we're ready for Sam ready for? to come Are we ready for Sam sing? for our first singing? Okay. Of course. Yeah, we can do me first. I would Aren't love... are you normally first? I'm always first. Yeah. I'm like the last... Because you make well, more laughs, but you need to be first. Sam, what music are you going to share with us? Oh, by the way, Sam did not wash today. He was uh, he was uh, doing art with a whole bunch of kids down at the sketching pad. No, he <laughs> so, did it all week. So your head so he, his, 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 his face and his arms are still painted. There's from signs that. of They are very probably well. painted from last night, too. But that was uh, yesterday. No, well. no, I got most of the paint off from yesterday. Okay, but, well, that's you know, there was a lot more paint today, and I tried to get off as much as I could. You guys should all have right. seen my arm, like, an hour ago. Okay. Um, yeah, no, tonight... Uh, we're going to be playing Everlasting God. Uh, I'm going to thank Michael for this again because he sent us a whole bunch of songs. And I'm probably going to be using all of those songs for at least the next month. We need month to go buy a capo, don't we? No, I have a capo somewhere. I just need to find yes, one. Yes, well, you know. Just you as long as you're not nice. using my brushes. So. I will make sure never to use your brushes. There we go. Only my own. Okay. You guys think you're right? I I'll sing the parts I can. Do you need me to hold it? I uh, know, I know the words by heart. They're more for you guys so that okay. you guys can see them. Okay. So that's all right. Go for it. I'll sing the first one. We, we'd love to listen to your you singing. Yeah, oh. especially high, high pitched. Oh, I can't do high pitched oh, singing. I you uh, oh, oh I was movie. trying to, but I was doing it terribly. All right. All right.
first or two, but, but I was really happy with it. Maybe your pain is getting better and better, too. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Who wants to do a sumo can't go wrong? So tonight we get from Sumo the Abete de Dios, the Sumo, the sumo of the Opera, which is a great story that's not based on anything in scripture, but a great story nonetheless. So he wants to do, Christopher wants to do a Sumo. Can't go wrong. Okay, so what song are we going to do, Christopher? A Sumo can't go wrong. Okay, Christopher, tell us. A Sumo can't go wrong. What Veggie Tales episode is that from? Sumo of the Opera. Sumo of the Opera. Did you Sorry. say good evening, everybody? Good evening, everybody. Are we ready? All right. Okay. All right. A sumo can't go wrong when he keeps on keeping on. Put up a fight, the world is right. Don't quit until you're done. Until the time will go, God loves us when we finish them. So don't stop. Just keep on keeping on. Just keep on keeping on. Good weekend. Have a good weekend. Uh, this is all sumo can't go wrong. You did sing a sumo can't go wrong. Yeah, good right. job, bud. So uh, now since we want to keep Bill Tidwell in our prayers, he will be having uh, surgery next Wednesday. Uh, uh, Sherry, they're keeping um, away from other people. They have to isolate until uh, he has the surgery on Wednesday. And Sherry said, if anybody wants to know anything more, you can give her a call. Um, you want to say anything about Kathy Norton? Uh, Kathy Norton had surgery today. You she came, oh, out. they called oh, me. Did wait, I check no, out? you did not. So I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. Don mm -hmm. called and said the doctor said everything went well. Good, good. And she was going home later this afternoon. So we just want to pray for her yep. recovery and pray that and, that goes well. And I got a call from John Garst. Patty will be coming home on Monday. So she continues to make improvement after her heart bypass surgery this past week. So. And I'm trying to think. Uh, I wrote down a prayer request that I will share on Sunday. I forgot to bring the book down with me. But, um, I, I, well, I, my Aunt Carolyn has asked for courage for peace. And, um, so we just pray for that for her and for whatever, uh, she is needing that for. So we pray for that as well. Um, our final all church service in the fellowship hall will be this Sunday at 10 a.m. Now. After this, and it's in our bulletin, or in our newsletter and a bulletin, we will keep some seats in the fellowship hall. We hope to be able to broadcast the service in there in case there's a few people that don't feel comfortable sitting in the sanctuary because we have a smaller sanctuary. We're going to keep our last two rows available for those who want to be masked and don't want to mingle with other people because there may be, there are some people who have shared that and there may be people who want to sit there, so we're going to have that. We will have worship over the radio this Sunday. We'll see if we can continue to do that. As I know, someone who's visiting has shared with me they will be sitting in the parking lot this week because of a grandchild. And so we just try to find ways, and we will continue to be online. Even as we go back to the, to the worship space, the sanctuary, we will continue to be online. We will have worship on Wednesday night. Uh, for the end of June, it will remain at 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. I will be there this week with our wonderful group uh, led by Gail Harville. And uh, that will be broadcast live this coming Wednesday. Then after, as we go back into July, the uh, service will go back to its regular time, which is 6.30. So, um, Also, our uh, music director, choir director, I should say choir director, Joan Thomas has asked me to share that um, she is looking for people who would like to join uh, choir or come back to choir. Uh, they hope to sing in August, later August. So you got plenty of time till then. But if you are interested or haven't sung in a while and would like to join again, just drop her a note and let her know. And we're looking for special music uh, during the summer to be shared. Um,
some pre-recorded, some shared in person. So if you're willing to do that as well, I was just thinking about you, Sam. If, well, if you're there with me, I might have you do that, but um, you could play. But uh, anyway, so we're looking for, we have special music in the summer. And um, so anyway, just, just let Joan know, uh, those of you who know Joan. If not, you can let me know, and I will make sure to share your name. And at Epiphany, we got uh, services at 8.30 and 11 uh, on, on Sunday, so uh, I invite you to come for that. And also, uh, speaking of choirs, not the, the full choir, but the bell choir is going to begin practices. They will begin practices at 10 o'clock on Sunday. So if you would like to be a little dingy, come join Don with the bell choir. Uh, I, I also kind of just wanted to make one small little mini announcement while I have this little mini bit of time. Uh, starting this Sunday, most likely, I'm going to try to see, uh, we're going to be starting to use the, uh, GoPros at Epiphany. Uh, I'm going to try to do two live streams where I do one that'll be a phone stream and one that'll be a GoPro stream, since this will be our first time doing this, and this will most likely be a test run. But anybody that can join in on the GoPro live stream, uh, we have Epiphany services at 11 o'clock. Uh, so for you St. John folks, you know, after church, if you want to join in just to see how the live stream is going, I would love any feedback that I can get, any sound quality issues that you might hear. I would love to have you and be able to hear what they might be. So that's the only and thing. And we do thank you who tell us when there's problems with sound. Yes. Uh, Sam has been working really hard trying to fix it at both congregations, and, um, and, and we're very grateful for him and Todd at, uh, and Larry Stormer is joining now, and we're very grateful for the help at St. John, so. And any help we can, I, sorry. <laughs> uh, any help we can get at St. John is needed, you know. We got a lot of help, especially at Epiphany, I think, you know, especially uh, when it comes to Greg and a couple others. We have a lot of the help, and since we're back in the sanctuary now at Epiphany, we're very, very good. But especially at St. John, you know, any help that we can get from any of you guys in terms of working with the mics and working with the sound, you know, is always appreciated, especially for the live streams, so. And I'm working on somebody else. Oh, no, and I figured that. I, I just, okay. anyway, sorry. Yeah. All right. So we hope you have a great weekend. Nothing big to celebrate this weekend, but it's summer, so enjoy. So come on Sunday at both St. John and, and Epiphany, where we will celebrate June 27th. That's right. Yes, because it's a mini resurrection. It's always yeah, celebrating Easter, Jesus. Always. Many Easter always. So, <laughs> all right, well, as we go tonight, God bless you to you. If you can't be with us, join us online. 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, St. John. 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Epiphany Lutheran Church. Yeah. We'll have worship, and it'll be up after those services if you're not able to join then. So, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you. On you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor. And give you peace. In the name of the Father, Amen. and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Good night.